Hey guys, Artosis here. Uh, today I'm going to do a little introduction to Zero Space. Uh, Zero Space right now as I'm filming this is in the middle of its first alpha playthrough, which is not completely open, but there are, is a good chunk of players playing. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a very good RTS game. I've been playing it a lot lately, but it is a lot to take in. And there's not really a lot of great resources on it yet, obviously, as it's in that first alpha. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead, just kind of explain how to get started playing and show you some very basic things uh, about it, like tech trees and, and what's going on. Because again, it is a little bit complex. It's a little bit hard to get into. This is going to be a bit of a messy video uh, because I'm basically going to be showing you exactly my own notes that I made for myself. Uh, and I hope that those are helpful for you. So uh, let's go ahead. I'm gonna just go ahead and hit play and host game. Uh, and I'm just gonna show you this first menu inside the game because uh, this can be a little bit overwhelming when you start. It's like, okay, well, here's the map that makes sense. Okay, observers, referees, ignore this. Uh, you can chat down here. But let's go ahead and look at this screen, change faction. So this, the very first time I played, this just confused the hell out of me. There is a lot going on here. Uh, so on the left-hand side, it's what they call the factions or the races if you come from StarCraft, right? So the top one, you click these icons, right? And these are the three different factions that are in the game so far. The Protectorate, they're kind of like Terran. We have the Grell, they're kind of like Zerg. We have the Legion, they're kind of like Protoss. There is going to be a fourth faction that hasn't been released yet. This middle area can look a little bit confusing. These are the talents. I'm going to go over these a little bit later. On the right-hand side are the mercenaries. Okay, so there's four mercenaries. Uh, uh, you can, well, four different sets of mercenaries, and you click on their little graphic to do it. And it's Maran, it's Dread Raiders, it's Valkyru, and it's Chakru Kingdom. So you go ahead and choose the combination that you want. An interesting thing that was pointed out to me is that this will be part of the balancing process is possibly doing things like banning out mercenary factions. I think that's a very cool idea, but these all play very differently and I'll explain more about that. We'll just start up uh, the game real quick against the AI just so I can show you a couple of things in here. Okay, so your worker, this is your main building. This is your, your mercenary building. This cannot be killed in case you're wondering. It has a countdown until you can get mercenaries. These are the Hexite Crystals upon which extractors get built. Okay, as you can see here, it's showing you your actual income. These uh, Hexite things, they give you one Hexite, uh, you know, like per second or so, and the main building gives you plus four. Okay, this is your worker that will build everything for you. If it dies, it respawns for free. Every new base that you build, you get one. This is what an expansion looks like. You go ahead and you throw down the building that you want. See, it will only go there because that is that is the expansion building. This is Flux. So Hexite is basically minerals. Flux is basically gas. And if you look around the map, there's all sorts of flux all over the place. There's bases all over the place. These circles that you see with countdown timers, this will make flux come in as well. And it will be spread out flux that can use more than one harvester. Ones like this that have a ton of flux, as you can see, it's got like 10,000 flux. You'll never run out of this in a game. Uh, it will stay there forever, but you can only get one harvester on it. Whereas these other ones, you can get multiples and it mines about twice as fast, uh, but they are in more central locations. So easier for your opponent to attack. We have these towers. The towers are going to build your experience if you hold them. These are things that you battle over in the game. They're shown as little yellow castles. They look like rooks on the mini map. Uh, and those are going to be something that uh, you and your opponent fight over. And those are going to build the experience bar for leveling up your talents. Another thing to note is right at the beginning of the game, you get to choose a hero. I'm gonna go over these heroes momentarily here, uh, but each race has its own heroes. Well, kind of, I'll talk about that as well. Uh, and yeah, one more one more quick thing. You, have, you can get a maximum of six harvesters for flux. Your bases mine at full capacity for the first three that you take, and then they mine at half capacity. I think it's an anti-snowballing mechanic. 
Okay, so that that's what I wanted to show you inside of this game. Uh, to quit the game, and this can be frustrating when you're losing your games, you have to hit F10. You can't just hit escape or anything like that. Alt Q doesn't work. F10, surrender. Not the score screen. It's going to show you a graph. Go to leave game. Okay, we're going to exit out of this. And I am going to show you guys... Uh, these are graphics that I make for myself to try to learn new RTS games if these graphics don't exist. And they don't exist, so... Uh, any of these graphics, I've actually dumped these off into my Discord channel, and I will leave a link uh, to that if anyone likes these graphics and wants to just download these or take a look at them where you don't have to pause a YouTube video, uh, feel free. I will leave that link in the description below. Okay, so the workers. For the Legion, these are what the workers look like. For the Protectorate, this is what the workers look like. For the Grell, this is what the workers look like. This one's called a seedling. These are called workers. These are called harvesters. I think this is just called Grell Harvester. These harvesters are the ones that do the flux. These are your builders. Seedlings die like drones. Uh, they spawn for free as well. All these spawn for free. In fact, if you lose a miner, they spawn for free as well and will be remade automatically. Each one of these has an ability. This one lays mines. Okay. Oh, I wish I hadn't clicked on that. Uh, that one lays mines. Okay. Ah, sorry guys. I'm in, uh, I use Evernote to, <laughs> to do everything. Uh, anyways, this one lays mines, this one heals, and this one builds little like, uh, creep expanding or, or grass expanding things that can turn into turrets. Okay. Here's what the talent tree looks like. Okay. So a talent tree uh, this is the thing. Okay, well, actually, let me go to the top bar first. This is the top bar you saw at the beginning that I mentioned. So you start with these two abilities. These two abilities use the energy that is the blue bar. The blue bar goes up very slowly on its own, and it increases as you lose units. Okay, so as your opponent kills your units, you will gain that extra energy to cast the spells that are here. These two on the right side are end game spells that you get for leveling up quite a bit. These you start with. Uh, generally, the one on the left will help you recall your units and get them back into position, and then you'll have a more uh, strategic, uh, faction-oriented one here. Uh, as far as the yellow bar, this is experience. This creeps up over time, and this is what builds when you have those towers, okay? that's It builds extra quick. Now, looking, this is what a full talent tree looks like. It looks a little bit overwhelming, but each level, you're going to be able to pick one. This right column is from the mercenaries. We'll talk more about that when we get to mercenaries. Anyways, you're going to have all of these talents. You choose whatever you want, basically, and when you hit level two, you can choose the next one, level three, level four, level five. These ones at the very bottom for each faction will open up these okay and they are those can be very strong uh and they can also be a little bit weak <laughs> we'll talk about those maybe a little bit later that's getting a little bit complicated anyways you can level up basically forever uh you just keep getting more levels so eventually you could have all these in a very long game okay so like if you are focused on infantry in the early game okay well maybe later on you can get some of these vehicle uh talents as well Okay, so there you have it as far as uh, these talents go. I'm not going to go over like each one or anything like that. This is just generally what it looks like. Let's look at some tech trees. Well, let's look at Protectorate first. This is the Protectorate tech tree. Supply platform. This is basically a supply depot. As soon as you have it, you can do in enhanced supply. This gives you way more supply. A sensor platform. That's like a detector. And a turret platform. Obviously, it defends. Uh, also, this opens up. The barracks. The barracks can make the commando immediately. It costs only Hexite. Uh, you can make a research lab, which will upgrade your units out of here as well. And the research lab allows you to make the bastion. Okay, after the factory is up, I mean, after the barracks is up, you can make a factory. Uh, the factory allows you immediately to make the Avenger Striker and gunship. The gunship is a flying unit. And it also allows you to make the mechanical research lab, which will upgrade all units from the factory. Once the mechanical research lab is up, you can build the Atlas. After the factory is made, you can make the advanced factory. The advanced factory will immediately allow you to make the Strider and the Juggernaut. Uh, and once you build the specialized research lab, that will open up the Disruptor, which of course is also made from the advanced factory. Here are the upgrades that come out of the specialized research lab. There's only one for each unit type right at this moment. 
Uh, and as you can see, you have to choose one, right? So you don't get to go back like with the talent tree and get both of these later. You have to actually decide uh, when you do it what that's going to look like. Uh, since I this was the first graphic I made, and I was like, oh, we have room. Let's put the specialized research lab upgrades here. Uh, <laughs> sorry that some of these graphics are made in different ways. I could see that uh, bugging people, but let's look at some of the other research labs. So the research lab, uh, this one is for the barracks units, right? So as you can see, each of these will have two upgrades. So like, for instance, you might choose plus 30% weapon range. That's going to lock this one out. It's going to open up later on one of these, but you do need the next research lab to open the, the uh, creation of these upgrades. So for instance, if you have the research lab, uh, you know, you can get this first level, but you're going to need the mechanical research lab, which is made after the factory to get the second level. Right now, the prices are completely flux for the upgrades. So again, kind of like gas. You can think of it that way if you're a StarCraft player. So it, like these would be 100 flux. These would be 150 flux. Okay, so you're going to choose one of each one. Mechanical research lab, same type of thing. Okay, you have each unit and it has its upgrades. Again, these second ones that are grayed out, you're going to need the special research lab that I already showed on that other sheet for those upgrades. Okay, let's take a look at the protectorate talent tree. Uh, I'm not going to go over this again, but like I said, right, these are the, uh, the talents that you can choose as you level up. Airstrike and Weapon X are those big ones that will open up on, on the bottom. I suggest that you kind of get into single player and just try these all out yourself. Uh, and of course, these graphics, if they are helpful for you, will be left in my Discord. The link will be below. Let's take a quick look at the heroes. First up, you have uh, Prefect Nova, right? So these are the three heroes that you can choose. Stun Blast, Charge, Construct Light Turret. Uh, you definitely want to go in and kind of toy with these. These are on cooldowns, okay? So these are not mana-based. They are not energy-based. So you want to be utilizing these a lot. Uh, same with the Dread Hero, right? Same with the Tech Hero. I'll leave it to you guys to go ahead and kind of dive into exactly what each of these do. But again, Protectorate Heroes, you get uh, cooldowns on these so you can use them kind of continually. And uh, also, by the way, you only get one hero with the, with the Protectorate. So whatever hero you choose at the beginning, that's your hero. You're going to use it for the whole game. As far as leveling heroes up, they level up at the same rate as your talents. Okay, so... Uh, like I showed before, where you're gaining experience from those towers in the center and everything, that is how these are going to level up. They don't level up significantly. Like, for instance, I think the first level they get gives them plus 20% health or something like that, right? It's not gigantic, but it helps them to scale throughout the game. Uh, so anyways, there you go. As far as those workers go, or uh, the, the heroes go. Um, I think that's it for Protectorate. We'll jump over to Legion next. Legion is kind of like Protoss. Oh, yeah, and by the way, for Protectorate that I just showed, I just want to mention real quick once again, it's kind of like Terran. There's a lot of micro. There's a lot of abilities, okay? Oh, yeah, and I should mention as well, the you see these little floating drone things near the barracks and the factory. Uh, I think the advanced factory has one. Anyways, uh, they heal your units, just want to throw that out there. It's an important thing. Like each, each, uh, you know, faction has something like that. So like you can run back to your production and you'll get healed up some. Okay. Jumping back towards Legion. Here's the tech tree. These guys are kind of like Protoss. The idle conduit. This is, it's not like a pylon, but it's like a supply depot. It restores mana. This is a, a faction that utilizes more heroes and they have mana instead of cooldowns or energy, whatever you want to call it, or mana, whatever. Anyways, Idle Conduit, it opens up the altar and it opens up the barracks. Now, the altar utilizes lots of flux for everything it does. So while it gets unlocked, this is not a building you'll see early on. Regardless, we'll mention this is where you make additional heroes. Uh, when you first start the game, you get to choose a hero like the other uh, factions. But with this one, you're going to go ahead and be able to make these additional heroes later on. Okay, so you open up the barracks. There's only two barracks units. The thralls, which make in twos. They're ranged units. You have the armored thrall. It's like a zealot, whatever. It makes in ones. Uh, the barracks allows you to make a warehouse and an armory. The armory, it gives upgrades specifically to your heroes. The warehouse, it gives upgrades for your thralls. 
Okay, now the warehouse opens up the next level of tech. Now, I said that this race is kind of like Protoss. This is the end of their tech tree. After the warehouse, you get the terror tank. <laughs> And the terror tank actually is just built by a worker. You don't build a production facility. So you could start 50 of these at once if you have the right amount of money. Okay. And the terror tank comes out. It's big. It's beefy. And you make turrets for it. As you can see, they're very flux intensive. They're very different, like a splash damage, shorter range. You have the longer range that hits air. You have stuff that makes makes it faster. You have stuff that gives shield to your units. So there's like a lot of flexibility of what you can do. Uh, with the terror tank, uh, and that is that is the end of the tech tree, which is kind of funny, right? Uh, let me take a quick look. Okay, so we have the Legion talents. This is another thing. If you want to go in depth on this, uh, then yeah, I will leave these these graphics again in my uh, Discord, which I have a link to below. Um, looking down, okay, the warehouse upgrades. These are the upgrades for your thralls, as you can see. Uh, you know, it's not, there's not like a lot there to choose from. Again, I'm making this during the first alpha, but yeah, it's like, oh, range guy. Yeah. Plus 20% damage. Oh, melee guy. Okay. Plus 20% health. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, let's take a quick look at our heroes here. We have Galavax. Galavax, uh, is very cool. This is like a healing spell and an AOE spell. These are the upgrades you can get from the armory. Very important that if you play with Legion, even though its tech tree is much smaller, you need to be thinking about the upgrades for your heroes. They are very, very important. Here's Kragar. Okay, more of a ranged hero, as you can see. Inquisitress, something in between a little bit, right? But remember that you need to get those armory upgrades uh, if you're going to go ahead and play this one. Uh yeah, and by the way, one of the, I did make like an extra one here. This is the obelisk. Okay, so this is like a retreating one. The obelisks are important. One thing that you might not notice when you start, and I didn't notice when I started, uh, when you tell it like control W, it'll let you choose E, R, or T, right? So you can make an attacking turret. You can make something that like slows things and, you know, they take more damage or you can make a healing turret, right? So you have some abilities there and this can be used anywhere on the battlefield. Okay, that's Legion. Let's jump over to Grell. This is the Grell tech tree. Nourishing pod. Okay, and by the way, Grell is kind of like Zerg, okay? It makes grass everywhere. You have to make on grass. It's kind of like creep. Nourishing pod is basically the supply depot. Uh, you have the cultivator that it allows. This is like a creep colony from StarCraft One that pushes the grass out. You can It's super cheap. It's unbelievably cheap. Okay, it's like five hexite, but it costs like 70 or so to turn it into an attacker. So that's like its turret defense. Okay, this opens up the incubator. The incubator immediately lets you make stingers, which are like zerglings and harbingers that are like roaches. You can also make the augmentation pool. This is the upgrade building for uh, these units, and that will unlock the weaver to be made from the incubator. The incubator opens up medium incubator, which you can then make the lasher and the screlling, uh, and you can make the advanced augmentation pool, which will upgrade these. The screlling is a flying unit. The medium incubator uh, opens up the large incubator. You can immediately make the reaver and the thresher, and you and the behemoth. The behemoth is a flying unit, by the way, uh, and this allows you to make the special augmentation pool, which will upgrade these units. So let's take a look real quick. Uh, augmentation pool. Here are some upgrades that you have for these units, and again, very similar to the way protector it plays, where you're going to need the next augmentation pool. Uh, to get those second level abilities for these units. All right, so we have the advanced augmentation pool. That would be the second one, right? Only two units coming out of that building. And then we have the special augmentation pool. Uh, and this one is the tier three tech. And so far in the game, I think they're going to add more upgrades. But as you can see, just one for all the top tier units right now. Here's a quick look at Grell talents that you may want to get. And here is the Grell hero, okay? One thing to mention, the Grell can choose any of the Protectorate heroes or its own hero, which is right now perfectly called the Grell hero. So you can see it has some different abilities. This guy is not great at soloing <laughs> other heroes, just something to mention. Uh, he's a lot of fun, but you definitely have to play him a little bit differently, but you can definitely check that out. Uh, okay, so that is the Grell 
uh, tech tree and talents. Uh, and that makes all three of the factions. Now I'm going to just really quickly talk about the mercenaries. Okay. Mercenaries. They are on, well, let me, let me jump into the talents here first. There's four sets of mercenaries and the mercenaries are going to be, uh, on countdown timers, you get up to four charges for the mercenaries, right? So uh, basically, I, that building I showed you at the very beginning of the building uh, of the video, you can make them out of there, or you can make them out of any of your like command centers or whatever you want to call them, Nexus, Hatchery, right? The main mining buildings, any of those can create the mercenaries as well. You can only make them uh, as the timer goes down, right? They're also in different tiers. So you have tier one, tier two, tier three. So let's say that you're protectorate. You need the barracks to make these. And then you need the factory to make this. Then you need the advanced factory to make this. It's different with Legion. If you have the warehouse, you can make everything. Okay, because they just have a smaller tech tree. So anyways, when you choose uh, a mercenary set, you get these abilities just added on. Okay, they don't change. Like protectorate doesn't have different Chakru kingdom talents. Okay, you can take a look, uh, and obviously the only way to really upgrade these are through the talents, but these are the type of units. A lot of them are really strong and really interesting. Definitely an important thing to consider. So that's Chakru. We have the Dread Raiders, which seem thematically to be about harassing economy and gaining money through that. Uh, a couple things to mention is there are some of these units that uh, get pretty strong, and they're being toyed with quite a bit still. Uh, some of them do moving shots, for instance, like this Dread Rover does moving shots. So definitely something you want to check out. Uh, a lot of times you could probably choose, you know, it, which which faction you want to use. Like, well, I guess let's say that you're playing like, uh, you know, Grell and you want to be able to harass economy. Maybe the Dread Raiders are the ones for you. There's also the Moran. You can see the Moran mercs here. And of course, I'm showing the numbers as well that they actually spawn when you get these. You have the Moran Talents. And last but not least, the Valkyrie, right? The Valkyrie actually are the only ones that only have four to choose from. Not exactly sure why or anything, uh, but they all have their own tech trees that go ahead and jump onto your, or their own talent trees that jump onto your talents. Okay. So, I mean, that was a little bit messy. It was a little bit quick. I hope that it helped you. It took me a lot of days to be able to figure all of this out. It is a, honestly, don't let it, uh, don't let it scare you from trying the game out. Like if you just start making a bunch of units and move around the map, it's pretty darn fun to play already. Uh, there's a lot to it. I know. Uh, but yeah, I hope that this helped you guys out a little bit. Uh, and, uh, good luck. <laughs> good luck in your zero space games.